Hey guys, what's going on? Today I'm very excited to be showing you iOS 12. I just installed the first beta here on my iPhone 10. I do have a long list of everything I'm gonna talk about today. So let's go ahead and jump in. Before I do that, I wanna show you in settings that I am running iOS 12. Some people always doubt me. iOS 12.0, it's a long build number. It is the first beta. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and talk about iOS 12. So the first thing they talked about is performance on the older devices. So they gave an example of the iPhone 5S. Uh, when you pull up a share sheet, when you're sharing a photo or something, it can open that share sheet two times faster. It can also open the camera faster when you swipe from right to left on the lock screen. So if you need to snap that last minute photo or something and you have an older device, it is nice to know that Apple has optimized those older devices uh, you know, to do some uh, basic tasks a lot faster. So usually with the new releases of iOS, Apple's focusing on the new devices, the new features, but it is kind of nice that they did uh, focus a little bit on the older devices and performance and stability uh, from some of those legacy devices. So there are some new features to AR. ARKit 2.0. So we have multi-person AR games. So multiple people can be in a room and playing like one big game of Jenga on the floor or something like that. We have improved face tracking and realistic rendering has to be expected with a new framework and a new measurement application. So this is a whole new app that you will get on your iPhone and uh, it uses the ARKit framework and you can measure stuff. So if I tap plus and I draw a line here, you can see here it told me that line that I drew was 33 centimeters and I have to trust it because I don't have a ruler, but it seems like it should be pretty accurate. Uh, it goes off of uh, you know the surroundings and what the camera sees and uh, the entire ARKit 2.0 framework. So it can tell you uh, the distance of what you measure and it can also do it in 3D. So if you need to measure, for example, the dimensions of a suitcase to see if it'll fit in the backseat of your car, for example, it can do that. So that's pretty cool. We do have a new uh, feature in Photos. We do, do have a new Search tab and a new For You tab. So in Photos here, we have For You. I'm not gonna click on that because I have some uh, personal family photos in there, but pretty much it's handpicked uh, from Siri with Siri Intelligence. Uh, Siri handpicks these lists that you think you'll wanna see. So curated lists and memories uh, based on what you've previously looked at. And we also have a new Search tab. So based on what you have previously searched in here, it'll give you suggestions. So say you recently searched for pictures of your dog and maybe you wanna do that again, maybe Siri will search for pictures of your cat now, for example. So based on what you searched, it'll uh, give you suggestions based on uh, your history. We do have some new improvements to Siri, not the improvements I was hoping for, but we still do have some cool improvements uh, nevertheless. Jumping into settings, going into Siri and search, we do have a thing called shortcuts. So pretty much if you tell Siri a trigger word, it'll trigger a, an entire uh, chain of events after saying that keyword. So I have an example here in notes. If you tell Siri, I'm going home, it can get you directions home in Apple Maps and it will turn on your music and connect to Bluetooth in your car. So one trigger word can trigger an entire list of events. And uh, I think every app on the App Store now gets access to this. So before when Apple opened up Siri to developers, it was only open to a specific list of you know registered apps and known apps. Now I think every app gets access to Siri shortcuts. So if you set up a trigger word in that application, you can set it up to do a whole chain of events, which is pretty cool. Siri did not get smarter though. It's not as smart as Alexa or Google Assistant. Still, I'm crossing my fingers that we do see that in iOS 13. So we do have some new improved applications. We do have a brand new voice memos application. So whenever you record something, it will go in iCloud now. And we do have a new icon. So instead of it just being a white waveform, we do have a red waveform. It looks kind of nice and I think it matches with the wallpaper. I'm not gonna open it up though, because for some reason, whenever you're recording a voice memo, it puts down your address, uh, your home address, wherever you're recording that voice memo. So I don't wanna put my home address on YouTube. So I'm not gonna open up the voice memos application, but it looks pretty similar. It does have a, a red waveform when you are recording in there and you can store your voice memos in iCloud. And also voice memos is available on the iPad now as well. We do have a new stocks application and I didn't open it because I want to show you guys this new splash screen. So it says, welcome to stocks. And you can see the all new design market news and uh, this looks excellent guys. We were hearing the rumors that Apple was gonna be getting a, uh, giving us a whole new stocks application and this looks really nice. So we have a page that we can pull over to look at the news and uh, when we're looking at the news, it shows us our stock prices up here. But when you put that back down, it just says stocks up here and you can scroll through your list of stocks. 
looks like Apple's up a bit today based on that, uh, the keynote. I guess people are uh, pretty excited for the new software. Um, I really like this new application. If this is a hint at what we're going to see in iOS 13 based on a redesign, uh, this is headed in the right direction. I really like the way uh, this application looks. Uh, now all we need is a redesign to the weather application, uh, but that hasn't come yet. So uh, let's jump back into notes. We do have a brand new Apple Books application. It's been changed from iBooks to Apple Books, if you care about that. Um, books here, I don't think there's anything new. It just says welcome to Apple Books and it does have a new font. And uh, I don't use iBooks a lot. I still prefer reading actual hardcover books. But uh, if you do use a lot of eBooks, there are some new features here and it does have a new font as well as a new design to the application. So that is nice. There are a lot of improvements to uh, Do Not Disturb. So I'm gonna jump here into settings. Uh, Do Not Disturb first starts off with Do Not Disturb at Night. So when you pick up your phone in the middle of the night, if you wanna use it as a flashlight or something, right now in iOS 11, it'll show you every single notification that you have on your lock screen, and that could prevent you from getting back to sleep. Now, if you turn on Do Not Disturb at night, it will just show you a time on a completely black screen, and then in the morning, it will show you all your notifications when you're ready to see them. So it seemed like the theme of Do Not Disturb this year at the Worldwide Developer Conference was trying to get your eyes off your phone and into the real world, because they don't want you to be using your phone as much because using your phone in the middle of the night could stop you from getting back to sleep. There are some notification settings so you can tune your notifications. Now I don't have any notifications here on my lock screen but I did take a screenshot for this moment uh, on the Apple website. So here you can change your notification settings from the lock screen. So if you get a Facebook notification, you can 3D touch on that notification and turn off notifications completely. You can choose a deliver quietly option, which will pretty much uh, just badge the app icon. It'll put it in your notification center, but it won't put it on your lock screen. So there's a lot more tuning features for notifications in iOS 12. And uh, I really do like that Apple is putting focus uh, on these new features. We also do have grouped notifications. Now I had a screenshot of this, I don't know where it went, but now your notifications will be stacked on top of each other. So now if you have uh, 10 notifications from the message application, it'll just show up as one card and then there'll be a little, uh, a little logo underneath that card that shows that there is more cards underneath that. I don't know where that went. I will go to the, uh, the website here just to show you that because it is a pretty big feature of iOS 12. So I have to go to the US version of the website and then click on iOS 12. And then right there. So you can see here that notifications can get expanded and there's that little uh, you know, animation right there. When you click on the notification, it will expand and show you all your notifications for that application. So that is something that we have been asking for uh, for a long time and I am happy that Apple finally has uh, group notifications on the iPhone and the iPad. There is a new feature uh, called Screen Time which will show your usage throughout the day. So if we jump into settings and click on this new tab which says Screen Time, we can see all of our usage, we can set app limits. So say for example, you only wanna be using YouTube for two hours in the day. Once you get to like five minutes left, your phone will send you a notification uh, saying that you only have five minutes left to use the application. And then when you try to open up the app, it'll actually block you from using it. Of course, you can get past this. Apple is not gonna completely block you out from using the application, but it's just kind of a suggestion to use your phone less and get your, get your eyes off your iPhone screen and into the real world. So like I said, that was kind of the real focus of Do Not Disturb at the conference. Uh, also, App Limits doesn't only work on your phone, it also works on uh, your kids' phones or your kids' iPads. So if you wanna manage uh, your, your kids' usage of their device, you can do that. And you can also disable certain apps after certain times. So after 11 p.m., if you only want them to be able to use messages and phone in case of an emergency, you can turn that on and turn off YouTube and Twitter and Snapchat, for example. Inside messages on the iPhone 10, uh, probably someone's favorite feature is new and emojis. So I'm gonna open up messages here. I'm just gonna take my uh, phone off the camera here so I can get rid of my messages. And uh, here I have a conversation with myself. And uh, if I tap on the new and emoji here, you can see we do have a new picker for and emojis. 
but we will find our new Animojis once we get to the back here. So we do have a new tiger, a koala, a T-Rex, which I find just hideous, and a ghost. And also with the new Animojis, we do have tongue tracking. So if you ever wondered what Apple was spending their time doing uh, sitting in their office in Cupertino, it was tongue tracking for Animojis. So I'll show you that right now. That's, that's all I'm gonna do. If you saw what I look like when I'm doing that, you wouldn't wanna see that ever again. But I, you can just stick your tongue out and it can now track your tongue if that's something that you have desire to do uh, with your Animojis. You also have a new feature called Memoji, which is kind of similar to what Samsung did on the Galaxy S9. You can create your own emoji based on yourself. So let's just, let's create the ugliest emoji we can. Let's create orange face. Let's do this. Hairstyle. Well, that's not really ugly, is it? I guess they're all kind of cute and uh, it's 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 very unique. I guess I have to mess around with this, but yeah, there's my there's my emoji. We got a uh, person with green hair, and uh, it just tracks like a normal an emoji does, except it looks like an actual person now. So you can have as many of these as you want, and uh, you can save these here. You you can have more than one. They'll just uh, end up right here on your list of an emojis and uh, now me emojis. So uh, I guess it is pretty cool. You have some personalization there uh, with your an emojis. We have uh, new features with FaceTime. Uh, the big feature that Apple is actually showing right on the home screen of their website is group FaceTime. So now you can have FaceTime with up to 32 different people. This is outstanding. And one of the cool features is it will detect whoever is talking and bring their tile up front. So it's not just a big cluster of everyone in the FaceTime. So if it detects that two people are talking, it'll bring their faces to the front and center uh, of that FaceTime call so you can see them when they are talking. You also do have Animojis and Memojis in the FaceTime application, uh, so you can put like your, your Memoji or your Animoji over your own face inside of a FaceTime call. To me, it's kind of gimmicky, the entire idea of Animojis and Memojis are kind of silly. I can see them being uh, popular with kids and stuff, but it is kind of cool technology when Apple uses the face tracking feature on the iPhone X uh, for those new features. So we do have some other ones that I jotted down here as the keynote went on. We do have a slightly new animation when 3D touching on notifications. Like I said, I don't have any notifications coming in on my phone here, so I can't show you that, but it is, uh, I think, a bit faster. We have a redesigned status bar on the iPad, and in fact, we have an entirely new control center on the iPad. So I took a screenshot here, and you can see here the status bar on the iPad puts all your toggles on the top right, and now to get to control center on the iPad, you have to swipe down from the top right, and your control center will show up right there. And finally, my favorite feature of iOS 12 is the ability to kill apps without holding the button. Thank you, Apple. Before we had to press and hold, wait for a red icon to show up on the top left. Now that doesn't happen. You can just swipe up and kill the application. I'm so thankful that that is here. So anyway, guys, that is it for iOS 12. Those are all the big features. There is one new wallpaper here in settings of wallpaper. You can see here, um, we don't have any new wallpapers. Usually when the GM release of iOS 12 comes out, we will have a whole bunch of new wallpapers. But anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching. Tell me in the comments what your favorite feature of iOS 12 is. My name is Mike. I'll see you in the next video.